Hello, Anime Visor here, with the Summer 2018 Anime Review. Back at the start of the summer season, I previewed 5 anime that were going to be airing during this season. Now that summer is over and those 5 anime have finished airing, it's time to take a look and see how they turned out. Well, 4 of them. I sort of felt like giving Grand Blue Dreaming its own video, so I'll be reviewing it in my next video, but we've still got 4 anime to cover as well as recommending an anime that I didn't cover originally in the preview, but that I think is worth checking out. With that said, let's go ahead and begin the Summer 2018 Anime Review, starting with High Score Girl. The year is 1991, and 6th grader Haruo Yaguchi only has video games to live for. He's not popular in school, and he's neither handsome, funny, nice, nor even friendly. The only thing he has going for him is that he's good at video games. One day at the local arcade, he plays Akira Ono, a fellow classmate, but who's popular, smart, pretty, and a rich girl that absolutely destroys him at Street Fighter 2. Not only does he lose to her 30 times in a row, he can't beat her at any other game. Haruo can't seem to shake Akira off, as she follows him from arcade to arcade every day after school and beats him every time. As weird as it sounds, the odd couple begins a strange bond and friendship. High Score Girl is a rom-com that follows Haruo and Akira not just in 6th grade, but middle and high school as well. Well, I say romance comedy because that's what my anime list has it tagged as, but outside a few silly antics from Haruo, there's not a lot of laughing. No, no, it's just more of a drama than a comedy. A slow, heartbreaking drama because very early on, one can easily tell best girl isn't going to win. This may come as a negative for high score girl, but this anime would have been boring and borderline suck if it wasn't for Koharu Hidaka, because before she was introduced, it kind of did. The first few episodes aren't particularly special. Haruo meets Akira, who can beat him at Street Fighter 2, and the only noteworthy thing about those episodes is that they actually are playing Street Fighter 2 and various other arcade games. Why is that the only noteworthy thing? Well, besides not being all that different from any other boy meets girl story, Haruo is an annoying loudmouth and Akira doesn't talk. Legit does not have any lines. The idea behind that is that she expresses and communicates through video games, and I'll be honest, that's kind of open for interpretation on what she means. That all when she just isn't hitting and punching Haruo almost all the time. It's supposed to be funny but I find that only really works when the character getting hit is being stupid or has done something wrong, not when the other person is just upset that things didn't go their way. Akira is just not a fun character to watch in my opinion, especially compared to Hidaka who at least tries to hold a conversation with Haruo. Haruo himself is also a bit hard to pin down. He goes from being an obnoxious loudmouth brat to actually being able to properly internalize his feelings for Akira at the drop of a hat. It's really jarring how he went from being a borderline unsympathetic dunce to understanding love all of a sudden. I won't say Haruo and Akira aren't cute at times, because they are, but how they got there feels very scripted, contrived, and was not a natural progression. Story aside, there's also the animation, which for 3D CG was decent. There were some frame rate issues occasionally, but it was still okay. Not as good as Land of the Lustrious, but better than Handshakers which I realize isn't saying much. Anyway, it was also announced that it was also going to have a few OVAs, which I'll probably watch just to finish out the story, but I'm not going to be re-watching High Score Girl anytime soon, mainly because Akira and Haruo weren't that interesting to me. Moving on to an anime that is a bit more comedy focused, Backstreet Girls Goku Dolls. A group of three Yakuza failed their boss for the last time. After messing up an important job, the boss gave them two choices. Honorably commit suicide, or go to Thailand to get a sex reassignment surgery in order to become female idols. After a gruesome year training to become idols, they successfully debut with overwhelming popularity, much to their dismay. This is where their tragedy truly begins. A comedy that pokes fun at Yakuza and idol culture, Backstreet Girls was alright. I don't think there was ever a moment I laughed out loud or anything, but it was able to hold my attention and keep me amused, mainly with the absurd situations the Goku dolls find themselves in over and over. 
not just with three men essentially trapped in a woman's body, but them forced to go along with the various plans by their boss, which plays with the extremes of both Yakuza and idle life, some of which is borderline torture. Though from what I've seen from some actual idol groups, torture may not be all that far-fetched. Anyway, being somewhat versed in Japanese idols in general, I probably got a little more out of Backstreet Girls than someone who isn't, but if you have some basic common knowledge of Japanese idol culture, you should be fine. Now specifically with this anime, I'm hesitant to bring up the animation. Well, not so much bad as, uh, non-existent. I mean, visually it's not terrible looking, it features decent drawn pictures with an okay style, it's just, you know, when it comes to moving those pictures, it doesn't do a whole lot of it. Obviously I'm exaggerating a little bit, characters do move, but it's only a step or two above a PowerPoint presentation at its best. So definitely not the best animation, and combined with the comedic moments not really being laugh out loud but just amusing, I can only say Backstreet Girls Goku Dolls was alright. Okay. Decent. I would say non-offensive, but based on some of the gags, I don't think that's quite true. Its lack of animation will probably turn a lot of people off, so I don't think it'll happen, but I moderately enjoyed it enough that I would probably watch a second season. But it also wouldn't break my heart if it didn't get one either. Up next, Cells at Work. This is a story about you. A tale about the inside of your body. According to a new study, the human body consists of approximately 37 trillion cells. These cells are hard at work every day within a world that is your body. From the oxygen carrying red blood cells to the bacteria fighting white blood cells. Get to know the unsung heroes and the drama that unfolds inside of you. It's the oddly relatable and interesting story that is the life of cells. Wow, that uh, synopsis on my anime list practically did my job for me. Cells at Work is an oddly relatable and interesting story about the life of cells. I honestly can't phrase it any better. It really is. I guess I can add that it primarily follows a certain red blood cell and a certain white blood cell as they do their job. I'll also add that it's relatable in the sense that, well, we're all humans. Well, most of us are humans anyway. And it's interesting in the sense that it personifies cells, showing all their hard work and challenges they face to keep our bodies running. Like I said in the preview, it's sort of the anime version of Osmosis Jones, and honestly a bit better in my opinion. Similar to Osmosis Jones, there's a lot of action, but Cells at Work can also be quite educational, as it will at multiple times stop and explain what a cell is and does. Getting back to the action, while there's a lot of fun and overly bloody action, when the immune system is triggered, I do feel there's a bit of a lull in said action after episode 7. I won't go too into it to avoid spoilers, but the threat that appeared in episodes 6 and 7 was a serious one. The episodes were dramatic and very climactic, and it left me wondering where the series would go. It does seem to pander around the next few episodes after that, but I will say that the last two episodes gave us a thrilling climax that relieved my worries. Other than that, Cells at Work can also be very cute. Dear none of the palettes were probably the second cutest thing this whole season. This is a complete personal preference, but a blushing Chisa is always number one. I'll have more on Chisa when I cover Grand Blue in my next video, but focusing on cells at work, definitely check it out. It's fun, entertaining, and honestly, you might learn something about your body you didn't know. So I'm definitely looking forward to a second season. There's also a spin-off manga called Cells at Work Black, but things are a bit more risque and dark. Would be interesting to see if that gets picked up sometime in the future as well. Anyway, coming to our final anime in the summer 2018 anime review, Happy Sugar Life. High schooler, Sato Matsuzaka, has a reputation for being easy, but one day her lifestyle of sleeping with one boy after another comes to an end. It happens when she meets the child, Shiho, for whom she is convinced she feels true love for the first time. Sato may seem sweet and innocent, but there's nothing she won't do to protect their life together, including committing murder. But from where did she acquire this little girl? And how long can their happy sugar life together last? Oh boy. Oh, oh, oh boy. No, no, quite the opposite for the most part. 
It's just I enjoyed it so much, I'm having a hard time putting it into words without spoiling too much. I guess I'll start by addressing one of my concerns I had going in back when I previewed Happy Sugar Life at the start of the season. That being that it would be dark and edgy for the sake of being dark and edgy. And while it may be a bit exaggerated at times, it does a good job at being dark for fairly justified means. That mostly being due to the fact that a good chunk of the characters are off the rockers. Seriously, they are either insane, schizophrenic, psychotic, and most belong in the loony bin. Though I maybe shouldn't phrase it like that. A lot of these characters clearly suffer from various forms of mental trauma and need psychiatric care. However, what is mental stress for them is an entertaining story for us. It was just thrilling to watch what Sato would do next to keep her and Shio together. How far would she really go and could she find a way to go about doing it without getting caught? It kept me glued to my seat while watching. There's so much this anime does visually and with storytelling, I find it very compelling. So much so that I just can't get into it without getting way too analytical or spoilery with it. One I could probably mention is the Jar of Candy. The jar being a metaphor for Sato's heart, empty, but if you can find love you can fill that jar with sweet things, i.e. candy. Also why this series is titled Happy Sugar Life. There's some really good background music that adds to the scenes, and this is probably no surprise, but once again, another top performance from Kana Hanazawa, the voice of Sato. She does a really good job at balancing Sato's persona, from when she's being cute and friendly, and when she starts to become more deranged. Happy Sugar Life was an engaging and entertaining watch. I could probably nitpick on some of the animation here and there, but overall it was a good solid anime and absolutely worth checking out. I'd say I'd look forward to another season, and there is still some stuff it could do, but this anime has a very solid conclusion. Make of that what you will. With all that said, that'll wrap up the Summer 2018 Anime Review. Before I go, I'll leave you with what has become somewhat customary, and that is my recommended anime from this season that I didn't originally cover in the preview. That anime being, How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. I know on the surface it may look like another typical etchy filled isekai, and if I'm honest, it is that a lot of the time, but it balances out its story and fan service very well, along with its crop of enjoyable main characters. It was a fun and entertaining watch. Do I have a best girl? Of course I have a best girl, what am I, a nutter? Well I like Rem a little more than Shara, and Sylvie's not bad either. Best girl for me goes to Edelgard, who is kind of a badass fallen, but also kind of cute because of the way she talks. So yeah. Go check out How Not to Summon a Demon Lord for a good plot and plot filled fantasy anime. As per usual, I'll have all links to the My Anime List page for the anime I covered down in the description in case you're interested in a little more information on them. And go ahead and let us know what your favorite anime from the summer 2018 anime season was in the comments below. As always, I've been Anime Visor. Thanks for watching and goodbye.